Hey guys, it's Chris from DSX Machina, and in this video, we're going to talk about some additional rules I, I failed to mention in the uh, previous rule explanation video for Neramata, and we'll also go into some errata and uh, some clarifications. Let's get to it. The first rule I wanted to discuss revolves the upgrade row. Now, previously, we've, we've always stated the fact that if you wanted a card, this card here is basically the cost indicated there. This one will be one plus uh the one next to it so this is one uh this is six this is eight nine ten this is nine ten eleven twelve now what thing we did not mention is how you actually manifest that in the game which is actually the reason that these lo these look like this rather than zing plus one plus two plus three is because you're supposed to place tokens to the left of it so if you want this one you have to pay the five but you must place a token uh a prestige token there right then likewise, if you wanted to get this one, you would have to pay the nine plus one here, and then you would also have to pay that to get that upgraded to a two. So now this, although you still have to put a coin here to get this one, this one's now one less, while this one now only costs three. So this creates a situation where if you are spending money to get some of these higher upgrades, these upgrades are, uh, are cheaper as a result. Now, it should be also noted that if you do pay to remove this and you end up spending only three to pr purchase this five card this does not move these shift over and this one's still cheaper so that gives you a quick explanation as how this upgrade row works there was some confusion partially on my fault about the difference between a contract and a favor this here is the signature winery this is the contract spot by going here on the first time you go here you get to pick up one of these bottles and then if you have a bottle for a winery going there activates the second phase the second part of the contract action which allows you to use any combination of available actions including this one at a one hour total discount minimum 30 minutes additionally these have favor spots all signature wineries have favor spots and this indicate that if you have a card that has favor requirements if you land on any of these you gain a favor token for that customer so to reiterate once again, this is a signature spot, this is the contract action, and all four spots here are favor spots for the purposes of satisfying a favor requirement. So simply for the view action, it, it involves you rolling this dice and getting a number of view tokens equivalent to the, the result here. One interesting rule we did add though is that if you gain more tokens than you, than you need, you can gain the difference in prestige. So if you roll a three, for example, and you only need a two, you can get one prestige. We had a few people ask about uh, duplicate tourists, and the answer here is the fact that there is actually no rule in place that says you can't run duplicate tourists. As we can see here, these tours actually have, although it's the same image, they have different requirements. Uh, if you have tourists with the same requirement or we have tourists with the same image, uh, there is no mechanical reason to not have duplicates. You can absolutely have duplicates of either requirements or, or images of tourists. The image of the tourist is entirely aesthetic. There's been some confusion regarding the use of using actions just to gain prestige, even though you don't need the assets. Uh, technically, this should not be allowed if you have a requirement for specifically tasting and you cannot place a tasting card, you cannot do that action. This is to uh, prevent people from using the tasting action to discard both cards uh, in able to uh, gain a massive prestige reward. This can be heavily abused, so we definitely su suggest that, that this not be in place. If we do a second printing, or when we do a second printing, uh, we will be adding a couple more changes to the rules, indicating that you cannot do an action if you cannot place any assets on your uh, on a tourist. Additionally, currently the rules say that you would discard all cards that you don't wish to use to gain the prestige reward. This is gonna get amended in a second edition that simply states you can only gain the prestige from one card, regardless of how many cards you discard. Uh, this has also helped to help mitigate the prestige creep uh, by using these actions. So to reiterate, uh, you, can, you cannot do a tasting action or any action if you cannot put assets on tourists and you're only gaining prestige for one discarded card regardless of how many cards you discard. Cards like this refer to uh, specifically the photo action, not generic rolling of this dice. So if you're doing a pit stop, this card does not alter that die roll. This only applies to photo actions. There are some unfortunate inconsistencies between the abilities on these cards and what they're stated in the manual. Easiest way of determining which one is correct is to determine which one is the more beneficial. For example, this ability here, you can do the uh, pairing action on the road and it always get, grants you eight. 
this eight is missing from the rule book, but that it actually applies here. If you do the pairing action on the road, you always receive eight. Subsequently, in this situation, you ignore the first penalty for a tourist, but in the manual, it says two. The two is correct.